Mr. Schock is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Dr. Berwick, for being here. Um, you know, I had a, uh, a real-life story myself uh, this week. I was back on my district work period, and I had some time with my father, which is sometimes rare. Uh, he's a family physician and a uh, young man. He's 62, and he informed me that he's calling it quits, uh, much to my surprise. Six kids in his family, five of them are doctors, and not a single one of them is convinced this is going to be good for their profession. And so I guess I challenge you when you suggest that this association or that association uh, or this group or that group supports it. When I go home every weekend, I go home during these district work periods, and I run into doctor after doctor after doctor who tells me uh, this is going to be bad for their profession. So I just put that out there as, as, as not some statistical fact, but a reality check, for me at least, uh, in my district and specifically in my family. Uh, would you agree that most Americans get their health insurance from their employer, private health insurance, but those who, who, who have private health insurance get it from their employer at this point? I think it's about 160 million people, yes. Okay. Is that most Americans who have private health insurance? It's the majority, I think. Okay. Um, are you aware last year when this bill first passed that uh, publicly held companies uh, specifically, again, coming back home to, to my home area, Caterpillar Tractor Company, which is in Peoria, other companies like Verizon, John Deere, had to submit to the SEC what one provision would do to their bottom line, specifically the change in Medicare Part D reimbursements. And for Caterpillar, it was a $100 million hit to their bottom line. You're aware of that? I was not, but please go ahead. You were not aware of that? No. Are you aware that uh, – well, let me back up. Are you aware – your assumption is that this, the bill as it stands, as it's been passed, will lower health care costs for employers in the long term? I believe that by improving care in America, which this bill takes a long step toward, care will become more affordable for everybody, not just Medicare, and better. But, but specifically my question is, since most Americans get their health care coverage from their employer – my constituents are specifically interested. Do you believe that the employer's health care that they're paying for will become less expensive? The, the route to that goal, which is my goal, I, I is share the improvement that. of care. Absolutely. So the improvement of care affects all. If we, we're, we're not going to make a better American health care system, doctors, nurses, hospitals, all of us together, only for Medicare and Medicaid beneficiaries. That would be impossible. So the agenda of making care better, safer, more reliable, smoother, more seamless, that's a benefit to all. And yes, indeed, if successfully executed, and I think that's what our country is headed for now, all together, public and private, it will benefit the private side as well as the public side of pay payment. Well, I find that interesting because I've heard that a lot when I'm in Washington, D.C., but I, are you aware of any publicly traded company who has to put out for the public their books and for their investors their project projections on costs, any, uh, any publicly traded company who is predicting their health care costs going down for uh, the next five years? I, I wouldn't know that, Congressman. What I know is that it's possible to get there, and we ought to be changing that way of thinking over time by making care better. I want to work with the private sector, employers, hospitals, professional societies, those who give care, health plans all together to make care better. Have you ever seen a patient with a post-operative infection that they didn't need to get? Do you understand what that costs in, in time and morbidity? Well, that could be a private pay patient or a public pay patient. It's still costing money. So I want to change the game in American health care with my colleagues in the private sector to make that care safer and better. And when we do that, the care get more, more, will get more affordable. And I'm not, a, I'm not an accountant or a stockbroker, but I'll bet yeah. you're going to see uh, companies around this country understand that the, their benefit, their health lies in a healthier health care system, which is what we're headed for. Yeah. Again, at the end of the day, I think we're interested in the realities, with all due respect. And the realities are uh, most major companies, and again, I'm not aware of any. You don't seem to be any aware of any. Uh, major health, uh, major employers who are providing health care coverage is health insurance premiums going down, nor are there predictions that their health care coverage would be going down. I have one final question since my time is about to expire, and it's with regards to you're aware of the, the two federal courts that have now ruled the individual mandate portion of the health law uh, unconstitutional. Two, I'm sure. uh, two have felt one way to the other. Okay. I, I'm curious if the administration uh, is required by the justice system to stop implementing this law 
uh, how you plan to comply with that? You'll have to speak with my colleagues in the Department of Justice and others more qualified than I to answer that question. Right now, my job is to forge ahead and try to make American health care improve, protect the beneficiaries, and implement the provisions of the law unless and until I'm told. Have there been any right. discussions in the Department? The, the gentleman's time has expired. Mr. Doggett is recognized, and time thank is very short. We're trying thank to you, get Mr. everybody Chairman. in. Uh, Dr. Burr, thank you for your distinguished service and your candor this morning. Uh, we know that an earlier generation of Republicans fought Lyndon Johnson in getting Medicare created in the first place with the same